So I want to start off just kind of giving you a brief overview of some gear that I use and just some gear um, in general that's you know available to you guys out there. Um, lots of different products at different price points. Um, so really just look at your budget and there's almost always going to be some solution to fit your needs. The wonderful thing in this day and age is you really don't have an excuse to not get at least decent audio because um, even very, very, very cost-effective gear um, performs extremely well, especially compared to 10 years ago. It's, it's really quite incredible that way. The first thing I wanna talk about is just recorder. Um, the recorder that I used on Project Valer is the Zoom F8, a great little handy, extremely light, extremely portable little uh, field recorder. I've had lots of different mixers in the past, sound devices, um, Tascam units, but just what I really liked about this is just how portable it is, and it just fits my needs for the projects um, that I do since I deal mostly with post. Um, but again, it was great for Project Valer. Um, so the wonderful thing about this unit is I have eight channels. You know, most of the time, if you're starting out, you'll probably be fine with, with two, honestly, um, and then maybe step up to four, uh, four inputs, which is great. So you can have one boom and up to three laws, which is fantastic. So with the F8, I have even some more versatility, but I do a lot of um, sound effects recording as well, or surround or what have you. So those extra channels, um, or inputs really work great for me, but you might just be fine with two, and then possibly just even four would be more than, than what you'd need there as well. Um, so with a decent recorder here that we're starting out with, obviously some decent headphones, that is very important. Um, don't just get a super cheap pair, because you want to actually be able to monitor and, and hear what you're getting. And with a cheap pair, um, you know, you're not gonna be really hearing things um, properly um, to know when, when, when you, you're properly, you know, getting the dialogue recordings that you need. So invest in a decent pair of headphones, you know, as much as your budget allows. Another thing that's really, really important, um, I, I believe, is just having a really proper, you know, gear bag. So this is a great one here, the Stingray by um, K-Tech here. And what's nice about just having a good gear bag is number one, you have all sorts of uh, well thought out um, compartments and holes to route cabling, what have you, um, all different ways to route, you know, your sources in from the sides, areas to put, you know, tape or extra little doodads, clip on points to, you know, put a boom holder thing there or some, um, you know, some tie downs or whatever for cables if you want to mount cables to it. So, you know, just a lot of these well thought out things instead of just, you know, having just one little strap and, and very uncomfortable or your gears exposed to, to the weather, you know, I, I have an attachment here so I can, you know, keep it protected from the rain as well. So again, bottom access, side access, ways to route cables, all sorts of interesting things that way. This really cool um, waist belt which this is really huge for me instead of just, you know, you typically, um, the option would be you just have like a one harness, but the bag kind of flops around a bit, especially if you're one man booming. So with this guy here, um, it's very easy, just connect like so, and then I already have it set up, but basically I can just attach to these points And there, the mixer is just right on my torso. It's really comfortable. Have my hands free just to hold the boom that I'll be getting to in just a moment here. And it makes it really quick and easy if you're taking a break or you need to relocate or whatever. You know, bam, just detached. Um, another thing that's really great and a lot of people don't even think about, most people are still doing like clapping and manually syncing things up in post. And that's really something that people need to start 
moving away from. Um, time code abilities uh, used to be very pricey, you know, even, you know, five, five to 10 years ago, especially. But nowadays we have so many great options for one, something that I like using uh, are the Tentacle Sync products here. So these extremely lightweight, um, very battery efficient, you get about like 40 hours or so charged to each one. But what's great is, you know, to set it up the simplest way, just hit this button here, it'll turn green. This guy is set to master. We'll just hold it here, set it to red. So that's in slave mode. So we'll go ahead and just jam the master to the slave. Blinking like that. Now they're both fully in sync. So what I would just do is typically attach my master unit to my field recorder. You always want your field recorder if you're doing double system sound to act as your master. So I'll just pop that in there. And then I would simply put this cable in here and you can get different cables depending upon you know your setup but then attach this lightweight unit to my DSLR for example so it doesn't have to even have a specific time code input because it can send time code through audio pulses and through the software that comes with these units which is really a lifesaver and I've never seen anything quite like it before the guys at Tentacle um, put together the Tentacle Sync Studio but it allows you know you just to dump all your media in whether it's time code that's embedded within um, the file itself or it's time code on an audio track it can interpret all that and sync all your footage up so you don't have to even mess with clapping or whatever it can be very um, run and gun friendly and that's how project valero was we did 18 pages in one day so there wasn't time to slate anything it was just very much like all right we good to go yes Time code's running, everything's going, and we didn't have to worry about anything else other than just getting the content we needed. So we really don't have an excuse not to use time code anymore. Again, these can be had for a very small amount of money. So it's definitely something you, you're gonna wanna look into if you want um, your you know, projects to run a little bit more smoothly, um, especially in terms of post, um, facilitating the syncing. So that's something that's really great. All right, so I want to talk about microphone choices and wind protection and different kind of options available to you that way. So typically when we're doing um, dialogue recording on location using, you know, a boom pole, etc., you're typically going to use, you know, two mics typically for indoor and outdoor. So for outdoor situations, um, it's ideal most to record with a shotgun microphone. So here's this Rode NTG3, which I use quite a lot. Um, and I'm always pleased with the results that way. So shotgun microphones are great because they have a lot of reach. So you can tend to be a little farther away from the talent, let's say for a little wider shot, and still get um, very full, warm sounding um, dialogue recordings. And shotgun microphones, kind of think of it like, like a spotlight or, or a floodlight. Um, a shotgun microphone is more like a spot light, very, very focused. So it's very, very directional. And where that really works to its strengths is if you're outdoors and there's something, you know, flying overhead or there's distant traffic or crowd off in the distance or an annoying bird or whatever, you can make sure to direct your microphone away from that problematic source and it will kind of, um, suppress that to a degree because again it's the polar pattern is fixated um, in a specific area uh, so shotgun microphones are going to always typically want you're going to want to use them outdoors or perhaps in a very large interior space again so it's a lot more focused a lot more directional but also gives you a lot more reach um, in those situations uh, so indoor typically you're going to want to use a small diaphragm microphone. So right here, I have a Russian made Octava, small diaphragm, small diaphragm condenser microphone. And these again are much better suited for the indoors just because it 
captures the natural acoustics of the room um, a lot more favorably than does a shotgun microphone, which kind of picks up the reflections um, a little more harshly. I don't know how to explain it as much, but it just doesn't sound quite as good. Not to mention the fact that you might be in some cramped spaces and having a longer microphone kind of eats up the space between your talent speaking and, and the ceiling above you. Uh, this is also going to be a lot more forgiving in its pickup pattern. So where the, the shotgun microphone might, you know, pick up more so in a more focused area, the hypercardioid or cardioid patterns are going to pick up in a slightly wider um, kind of pickup area. So they're not going to have as much reach, but again, in indoor situations, you're typically not in a scenario where you have to, you know, have your microphone um, as far away from the talent speaking. If you have the money available, it's nice to have both of these options just because they're a little bit better suited for those different environments and have certain characteristics for such. I see way too many people that just use the stock accessories that come with their microphones, such as this microphone mount here. So you might attach it like so, but you want to get rid of this right away, especially in terms of location sound recording. This is fine for studio work, obviously, but when you're out in the field, you're going to want what is a shock mount or suspension mount. So here we have a K-Tech unit here that is made to fit longer microphones, like a shotgun microphone. And so basically what this does is it decouples any vibrations from your boom pole, from your hand, from movements, um, from that being captured within the microphone itself in the form of, of handling noise or rumble. Uh, and that's something that I hear far too often in very poorly recorded uh, dialogue. So again, shock mount, suspension mount, you know, the simplest thing, what it does is it decouples your boom pole, your handling um, movements, noise from reaching the microphone itself and being infused into that recording. So very, very, very important. And just make sure that you get a proper shock mount to fit the type of microphone you have. You don't want, you know, a smaller shock mount, let's say, handling a much bigger microphone that's too flimsy for it. Or you don't want a big shock mount, suspension mount like this, um, to be used with a small diaphragm um, condenser microphone because it's it's not going to fit, you know what I mean? Or it's going to be, you know, eating up over the, you know, the actual microphone elements here. You want to make sure that it's just attached to the body of the microphone right here. Now I want to talk about personal radio mics, lavaliers, lav concealment. Um, and just give you a brief overview of you know a few different pro products that might help you to achieve really great um, audio via lavalier microphones. So I have Electrosonics unit here. This is what I use for Project Valair. I use some um, Rode transmitters and receivers as well. Um, those are a very good cost-effective unit um, too. But I really like the Electrosonics because they're extremely rugged and they're just foolproof. Um, they don't give me any headaches, so I really like using those. I have a Rode Lav here. This is kind of your standard setup. You have just the clip and little foamy guy right on the microphone capsule there, basically what I'm wearing to speak to you right now. So to keep the microphone out of the camera's view, we need to conceal it um, uh, underneath uh, the talent's clothing. So there's a number of ways I do that here. So typically, let's say if you have a button up option, uh, I'm going to have this set up right here. So I really like uh, these rubber units that basically um, isolate this microphone element um, from having any direct contact with fabric. Okay, so it's gonna rub on this rubber piece, but it's not gonna rub on the actual element because a lot of the issues that you have just straight putting it underneath someone's clothing is you're gonna have a lot of rustle noise. And that's oftentimes very unusable in post. Um, and it's very harsh to the ear. Uh, so it's not gonna give you good results. So I typically use, I like this product, um, and there are lots of different ones out there, but I like using rye coat stickies. So just these simple little pre-cut 
uh, stickies and I'll mount that to my rubber piece here and obviously remove the backing attach it you know I might do some you know you know strain relief on on the cable there just to make sure it's not pulling directly uh, where it should not be uh, a lot of times I'll also use some of these products it's top stick or stick it and it's double-sided sticky tape and so you know for a situation like this I might maybe rip this in half attach a certain piece just to make sure that the cloth is not moving anywhere near where the microphone element is itself so these can be very helpful just kind of tack down some distracting noisy elements of someone's or a specific talent's clothing okay uh, another really good area to uh, mount a lavalier microphone is kind of just tucked neatly inside a collar so maybe if someone's wearing a suit you can have that kind of just poking out using the same method I've used here, but just in the collar section, run down the cable down the back side, or if you put a hole into the clothing itself, you could then funnel it back, you know, within the shirt itself. So lots of different options there. If let's say the talent is wearing a tie, this is another great place to put a lavalier microphone and just tuck it. Um, I'm using the Rode Invisilav here, but just tuck it right inside the little knot of the tie itself. Manage your cable appropriately. And that's another great way to conceal it. In terms of just um, someone just wearing a normal shirt like I am right now, typically what I'll do, you know, using that same rubber piece or, uh, or some different products out there, I'll mount it right, um, you know, in that sternum area where it's, it's a little lower so naturally you kind of have um, uh, naturally you kind of have um, a crevice area for the microphone to lie and not to be protruding out to be visible and you know where it's not going to get messed with in terms of the audio fidelity uh, typically if I'm just mounting it on someone you know directly to their skin I'll probably use some tape like this cloth tape here which is really nice on the skin or this medical tape more plasticky tape uh, here as well so these are two great tapes that i use quite frequently but i might um, if i have the microphone mounted mounted right here um, in the in the sternum area i'll probably then tape right here and then wrap it around to the back side of the talent's back and then funnel it down to the small of the back where I'll typically have the transmitter. So to kind of give you a visual of what that might look like, um, probably like the most standard, convenient and um, typical situation you'll find yourself mounting the transmitter pack is the small of the back. So I'll turn around right quick here. So imagine obviously this is beneath the layers of clothing, but right there in the small of the back, where naturally there's a little um, kind of indent kind of naturally within the physique of most people. So the pack isn't most of the time not going to be sticking out. It's not going to be as noticeable on camera, if at all. And then using this Neopax waistband here, affix it properly. Nice and secure, very comfortable to the talent. Um, and obviously funneling that cable down to the transmitter directly. So there's other options for mounting the lavalier, like this kind of bra strap to a degree, which can work for women. So you can just funnel the um, microphone diaphragm for the lavalier through two different size holes, depending upon the microphone that you're working with right above underneath someone's clothing. That's an option. Lots of different pro products out there. If you have the ability and or money, you know, you might find yourself wanting to kind of play around with a few different options or just honestly having a few little tricks up your sleeve in your toolbox that you can go to in a pinch depending upon what you're doing. Or, you know, the right coat option here, we have some overcovers. So, you know, I might take 
this rye coat sticky. Place the microphone on the sticky directly and then put this over cover, which will help in a little windier conditions or just a very simple felt pad. So this can work and these are a little bit, you know, cheaper depending, um, but I've really found that these rubber isolators um, really work great for me. And again, there are lots of other products on the market that do a fantastic job. So it's kind of up to you to kind of play around with a few different options and see what works for you the best. But again, this is just kind of a brief overview, just at least give you some options um, on what's possible. And just to start moving you beyond the realm of just simple, basic, I got a boom and I'm using the standard accessories. Let's move beyond that um, so we can ensure that we are getting the best dialogue recordings as possible. Uh, and again, it's, it's, it's always nice to have that tandem between the boom and the personal radio mics because they both have their strengths and they both have their weaknesses. So having some redundancy um, uh, involved as well is very, very helpful on the back end if you're doing wide shots or if you need to mix a little bit of the lav with the boom or cut between the two if someone's off mic for, for a, a specific word and then comes back on, you can mix between the two. So it's great having that redundancy, that flexibility and that versatility.